I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, and my sister, Maddie, who before starting her own adventure, joined us in rocking out a state-of-the-art refit on our floating home. Now, we're ready to set sail to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. Today is December 26th, the day after Christmas. We had a lovely relaxing day off, but it is back to work. Ty is already over there grinding and sanding on the port part, finishing preparations for it to go in. Madison is cutting the fiberglass for the tabbing. Sydney is following Ty with a sander so that we can finish prep on that port part. And I'm gonna go be hero support to all those guys. So we're gonna get the hell out of here soon. But I'm currently cutting all of the tabbing strips for the port side. So we're doing it in two layers so that we can ensure proper adhesion and structure. So we're doing a three and a half inch layer first. And after that goes on and gets set and I get all 30 of these cut, this is only piece 13 out of 30. You got a few more to do. And then I'm gonna go back through and measure seven inch strips so that we have our second layer to go over and that is gonna be the final layer of tabbing that goes over top of it to completely secure the part to the hull. Woohoo! Yay! All right, carry on. My glasses are getting foggy from my sweat. Ah. <laughs> it's a good thing I don't need them to see close up. Hold on. Say that again? I wasn't listening. So we're using Seahawk Tough Stuff uh, epoxy barrier coat. So we need to mix these up before we combine them. But once we combine them, it's got a 30 minute induction time. What does that mean, Madison? Honestly, I, I couldn't tell you. That means you gotta let it sit for 30 minutes before you use it, so all the bonds can link up. Yeah, I didn't do that. Just like top coat. But we're doing it on our boat. Yeah, I, I didn't do that. And it worked just fine every other time. Well, I'm glad this for your This is a man confidence. that's following directions. That's weird. Yeah, I read the instructions. And you're gonna do what it says? I am. That's weird. So that looks disgusting. It's like baby it's shit. It's like baby shit. <laughs> and this one doesn't look much better. Well, like, this is the base and this is the activator. Yeah, but it still looks a little... Yeah, all the solids. Ooh. Yum. So I'm gonna mix it, stand here and mix for like 20 minutes. Yummy. It's still exciting. It is, because we're putting stuff on the boat. Yay! We're mixing this up because we are going to put uh, barrier coat and bottom paint where the boat is going to sit on the rails. So the rest of the boat will be hanging free and we'll be able to do all the rest of the bottom work and get the keels on and all of that. And then they'll just be able to drop us in the water. So we won't have to get picked up again and hang in the slings or anything like that to uh, do underneath the keels or any other spots on the boat. So we're just doing these four patches um, so that we can do everything else without having to pay the yard again to move us again. So essentially we're doing what everybody else is doing, but we dr we're doing it in reverse because right. typically you paint the bottom of the whole boat and then the night before right. you splash, you would do where the jack stands sit. You'd sit in the slings and... Yeah, sit, sit in the slings, but because we're going in on the, in, on the rail system, we're not going to be going in on the travel lift. So there's only four spots like this big that the boat sits on. So it's going to be really convenient for us. Is that your exercise? Yep. Reach, keep that tummy tight. And bend, and tuck. And don't forget to breathe. And one, and two. <laughs> Sydney, yeah. when you're done filming, you should get a broom and start sweeping. I did sweep. Like under the boat where the paint's at. And yeah, there's there. a lot of paint all over under the boat. We probably should definitely get that cleaned up. Listen. 
What you got there, Sid? So one of our lovely subscribers, Wendy and Josh, uh, they dropped off this little care package for us at the dock so that when we got home, there's all this stuff and there's little treats on this plate. And then in here, it, the box says, please enjoy some homemade shrimp gumbo and our favorite tamales. Thank you for the inspiration. Merry Christmas and happy new year. Much love. And then they signed it. So these are the tamales. There's, so they said that these were their favorite tamales and we have like packages Tons upon of packages, packages of them. And then this is a mango salsa. Oh my and then gosh. These are two other kinds of salsa. Oh my gosh. And candy canes. Ah, uh, so you gotta have of candy course. canes. A bottle of wine. <laughs> this must be for the gumbo. Oh. And this must be the gumbo. This oh the my gumbo. gosh. Wow. That is, that is so amazing. So cool. Wendy and Josh, you guys you. are awesome. Thank you so much. We were worried about what to have for dinner tonight. Well, and now we don't, have, we to don't have to worry. Yay. That is fantastic. Okay, we're going to eat. Today is an extremely exciting day. We are finishing preparations on the port part. And today we're going to become a full boat again. So this is about to be closed in because tomorrow we're going on the rail cars for the last time. So freaking excited right now. We're going to get to work. We got a lot to do. Somebody is very bored with this process. I think Stella's over it. <laughs> Do you want these? Well, I just really would like you to kind of be a part of this process. Trying to put out a fire and flip a, or move apart. We're not flipping it, we're moving it. Wow, magic. I know. Yay. Sure Remember, it has, to go, it has to go more on the back side. The back side yeah, because of the weight distribution. Right, we're going to watch as it goes up, hopefully. Here. This one's not as heavy as the this other one. <laughs> the styrofoam sounds so terrible. I want to balance that side over there, Maddie. Yeah. Make sure we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you. You just have to undo it from the thing then. Thank you. Nice. So the port part is clamped in place and Ty is currently taking measurements for the fiberglass pieces that we'll do that it's going to be the initial tabbing inside and out and then we'll do the polyester filler that will go on the bulkheads and then we'll be ready to get picked up tomorrow but what that means for tonight is it's dark out we're gonna be working late tonight so we're gonna make it happen but we're gonna be tired it's all for a good cause though check it out we're like a whole boat again yay all right so we are putting the port hull in tonight and before we do all the inside tabbing because the part is bolted up in place and it's not going to move we're actually going to get in and use this polyester structural putty um, that we got from total boat obviously it's great stuff this is the material that goes between the bottom of the mast and companionway bulkhead and the hull because there is a gap about yay deep and uh, we got that gap when we actually cut off the old damage and repair and what have you and the reason we're putting this in is because to fill that back in if they were to pick us up with the travel lift and that strap was to push on the bulkhead it would want to flex the hull in until it touched the bulkhead and we don't want to crack the bulkhead so this basically does a structural non-compressive fill between the bottom of the mast bulkhead, companionway bulkhead, and the whole replacement parts that we put in. So we have a nice solid surface from the outside skin all the way to the bulkheads. And they do the same process from the factory. Yes. They use a filler as well. So we're just replicating the actual process Correct. that goes from the factory. We're just happening to use blue instead of the bronzy color or amber right. color that the factory uses. But still polyester, and the reason we're doing a polyester structural um, repair putty. This has cabosil in it and milled fibers just like we would put if we were using epoxy. The problem that we have is, is if we were to mix it this thick with epoxy, it would blow out because we can't control the rate of cure. But with MEK, you can control how fast the product cures on a polyester product, which allows us to make a big thick fill and not get blowout and still maintain structural integrity. integrity. Say that three times fast. Still maintain structural integrity. Got it. Good. All right. And Maddie is going to be in the tightest, most enclosed space to apply said filler. So she has her respirator. Yay. So fun. <laughs> 
<laughs> so excited. I know, but you gotta have it. With all the polyester fill done and the tabbing in place, it's time to go home and get some sleep. So we were at the yard last night until about 11.30, quarter to midnight. Um, we got the tabbing and the cabasil done, so we should be good to go for our move to the rail cars this morning. But I gotta tell you, crew morale is low. I think everybody is just super, super tired. So I'm really hoping that this sunrise and this beautiful morning will help everyone get a little bit more of a boost for today because we're gonna need it. <laughs> Let's go get this boat moved. Remember those rudders we had made at Foss Foam? Well, we figured that since the boat is hoisted so high in the air with the travel lift, that it's the perfect time to test fit them. These are the first Leopard 50 rudders that Foss Foam has made, so we wanted to make sure that the fit is as intended. If you notice when we put the parts on the holes, the ground clearance from the keel step to the concrete is inches, and we need feet of clearance to get the keels attached. So going on rail cars puts us back at the perfect height to achieve the next phase. But why are we moving out of the building? Don't worry, it's just for an hour or so. A mold that was being used to fabricate parts for another boat needed to be moved out of the building. And since we're mobile now, a little house cleaning in the shed was in order. Now we're back inside and the final stages of this repair can proceed. But first, one of the most exciting things in this process is about to happen. It's time to destroy the physical evidence of the proprietary information provided by Robertson and Kane.
This is so monumental. It means that we did it. All the months of planning and consultations and waiting for materials and itchy, exhausting work has paid off and we've got ourselves a boat. Watching the loader bust up the mold was so much fun and so amazingly satisfying for all of us. Join us next week as we finish the keels.